Welcome to the podcast, guys. Today I've got Leo here. My name's Luis. Thank you for joining. And uh, Leo, really, you know, just going to throw you into the lions here and, and, and get started super early. So just tell us a little bit more about Plutio, right? You're, you're the founder, CEO. Uh, I think this has been going on for quite some time now. I've, I've seen you in, in Facebook groups. I've seen, you know, Plutio in, in a lot of different places. So just you know, give us a little bit of background actually on, on yourself, right? Where did you grow up and how did you get into the tech slash startup industry? Well, the story starts uh, when I was about 15 years old in Dubai. Um, that's where I was actually, where I, where I was brought up. And um, it all comes to my love, to my love um, of animals. Uh, at that point of time, I well, always loved animals. And one of the things I wanted to do is shelter all dogs. So the, in Dubai, there used to be quite a lot of dogs around, just no home, just you know, running around. And I sort of wanted to shelter them, I wanted to take them in. And obviously, personally, I couldn't do that because I was pretty young and mom and dad wouldn't allow me to have a dog at all in the house. So every time, well, every other day after school, I used to go down to a pet shop just around where we used to live. And I used to play with the dogs and cats and um, a few other animals there as well. But uh, one day, I wanted to do more than just playing with them and, you know, feeding them. And mm -hmm. so I decided mm -hmm. to learn how to build a website. And mm -hmm. the aim was to build a website that helped connect uh, veterinarians with pet owners and sort of uh, rescue, you know, if, if you found a dog, you sort of report it and we try and find a, a home for them. And so I went back home and I started Googling how to build a website. And a um, few, few options came to, um, well, I played with a few options. It was one of, one of the first was Wix, and then I moved on to Wix. And I, 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 I stuck with Wix, and I started building a website on there, and I managed to build a couple of websites. I actually have screenshots of them up yeah. until, day, until today, and it's, it's, it's really pretty cool. Um, and then I've realized that I could do more than just building websites for, you know, veterinarians. I could try and build a, an online organization of some sort or a forum. So I, I became a little bit more advanced and I taught myself how to design, not necessarily how to code, but how to design because the tools used to build the code for you, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, around that time, Wix launched a directory called the Wix uh, Designers Directory. And they, I was one of the very first people to be invited on there. And I got my very first paying client as by International Airport. Um, and I, that was my first website for a client. So I, I realized I could actually do this for a living, building mm -hmm. websites for people. And so I started designing websites ever since. I've been freelancing ever since I was 15. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. during, towards the end of my time in college, I moved here in England um, to, to study. And towards the end of my time in college, I tried to grow my business, my design business. I tried to get into passive income, into hosting, domain reselling and all that sort of stuff. And it actually worked pretty well, but the more work I got on, so the more clients I got on, the more websites to manage and host I got on is, the more admin work I had to do. And it was always pulling me back from growing and scaling my design business. Mm -hmm. And so I tried to find a way to, as a freelance, as a small business owner, I tried to find a tool that could basically streamline and centralize my business so I can run it or set it on autopilot or simplify the, the flow so it gives me more more sort of um, um leeway to grow mm -hmm. and i couldn't necessarily find i couldn't I couldn't find anything sort of dedicated to us freelancers and small businesses everything was about teams and team collaboration you know think asana basecamp trello everything you can think of out there was about team it was even engraved in their slogans team 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 so i then sort of set, set myself on a mission to create a platform to support freelancers and build something that could be the right hand of freelancers small businesses worldwide. And that's how the Plutio, the idea of Plutio came to me. Very cool. That's really awesome. And I think it goes back to like a couple of ideas behind entrepreneurship, right? And I think there's two main types of entrepreneurs. I think something's echoing. Something's here. echoing. Um, but so we have those people that are, you know, they, they're entrepreneurs because they find that they are needing some sort of solution for their own sake. And there's also the entrepreneurs that 
they see that there's some sort of gap between, you know, a buyer and a seller and they want to fill that, but they're not experiencing that problem. In this case, you're, you're the, you're the first kind, right? Where you, you had a, a very clear problem that you couldn't grow your business because you had to do all this other stuff that you didn't want to be doing as far as administration and stuff like that. And just organizing stuff within the business that essentially, you know, you had a, a little bit of an aha moment and created the business, which is pretty cool. Now, did you have any sort of experience building or like coding an actual platform or how did you manage to do that? I mean, at this point you're already an entrepreneur, but you're also like a, a solopreneur What I, I feel like you don't always think of outsourcing at that point. You're thinking of, okay, how am I going to do this myself? And, yeah. So where did you realize, okay, I, I need to either bring somebody else on to, to help me with the tech side of things, or I need to learn how to do these things? Well, it's a good question. I leveraged my design skills that I've built over the years building websites to try and build a product, a, you know, an interface. And so I've leveraged my uh, skills of CSS, the basic sort of programming languages such as HTML and CSS to build the interface. So build what I envision and make it sort of, you know, physical, if that makes sense. And that really, really helped because um, first I, I, I was able to save tons of money and time, you know, looking for someone who can actually do it for me and try and find someone who can sort of uh, do the vision that I have, you know, build the, my vision. So it was pretty easy and time saving that I was able to do that myself. But then I was stuck where, you know, I, okay, I, I, was, I was able to do the front end, but I can't can do the back end, I can't make it work. So yeah. I tried to learn how to code, um, back end coding, and um, it's it just, you know, I, I wasn't able to get really deep into it because I'm more of a creative person, more of a sort of, you know, design, if that makes sense, more of the product. And when, when it comes to the back end, although I tried, I couldn't really give it the time it needed. And if I was going to do it all my, by myself, it, wouldn't, it would have taken me quite a long time to do. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. I've managed to hire someone to, to get someone else on board who could actually sort of complement my skills and do that part um, of development. But where did you find that person? Well, it's actually a long story because the first agency I found, um, I, funded it, I funded them uh, through my savings and they didn't deliver anything for seven months. I had to go to court and it was a whole uh, roller coaster process and nothing got done for, under, for just under a year. And then I had to start again and find someone else, um, which they really sort of got the, the, the basic MVP done in a, in a very short period of time, which was fantastic. But then they were expensive, so I needed to find a different sort of um, way to do it. And that's when I uh, tried to focus more on building on building websites so I can fund development of Putio. Mm -hmm. So I managed to find someone, you know, contractor, a contractor developer to, go, to get on board. And they were funded through my design business as well as my uh, part-time work for a company in London as well. And I was doing Airbnb on a site. So I was trying to do oh all these sort of, yeah, gigs to try and fund it. And it worked really well until we launched on AppSumo and made enough money to fund itself as well. Yeah. Left everything yeah. else and focused completely on it. That's amazing. And we're talking here about, so I, I would say 12 years, but that's not exactly because 12 years ago, that's kind of where you first got started um with everything so this is what some nine eight years ago yeah so th this about five years ago five five and a half six years ago yeah that's really that's really cool and and what's let's you bring on the person they they help you code and, and build the actual tool what happens after that it, this is the hard part right where okay now now i need to get this off the ground and actually get people to use it how did you start doing that like what was the first step Yes. So um, as a solo founder, um, we always sort of try and, well, we always get sunk into the development part of the, of, of the process, you know, building, you know, I want to have an idea, I want to build it. And I sort of, you know, focus on that and I sort of lose track of growing the business or getting it at least validated, making sure that it's, you know, what I'm building is going to be used by people. People actually will use this. It's useful. So we, we a lot of times we sort of lose track um, from that and that's what happened to me for the first year or so. I was so focused on the product and building it that I didn't re you know, so I realized a bit later that I'm building something that I think might work for me, but not necessarily for everyone else. 
-hmm. And that's when I stopped and I said, I need to validate the idea now. And so I, f I found the best approach to that was through a AppSumo launch. So I partnered with AppSumo and I launched with them in 2017. And that's when I was able to validate the idea. Um, so from that, we were able to say, okay, so Plutio is a product people want, people need, and they have it to pay for. That's really cool. How, if you don't mind me asking, how many, about how many users did you get from it? And was that the first thing before, obviously you yourself were using the product or were there more people already using it, just not at a larger scale? Yeah, th there were a few beta, beta testers on there that I managed to get uh, from uh, beta list and a couple of other directories as well. Um, it wasn't a lot, it was just in the hundreds. Um, so yeah. Okay, and then, and then AppSumo got you some, I don't know, thousand users, something like that? About 5,000. 5,000, very nice, very cool. And, and okay, so you validated the idea, what happens after that? Well, after the deal, um, we obviously got a good, decent amount of money that made, allowed us to uh, completely focus on Plutio. I was able to bring developer on sort of full-time basis. I was able to bring someone else also on board to help me with, with the course of sort of, you know, customer support and all that sort of stuff. And I was able to fully focus on the business. Um, it's been about three, three years now, and we did a couple of launches with them to help fund the business. And um, the idea was to use that money to fund the development of Plutio until it's at a level where we can actually push it, market it to, to, the, to the mass audience. But also before that money runs out, we need to make sure that we're profitable. And mm -hmm. that's what happened. Um, before the, literally just a couple of months before the money is run out, we were able, we were profitable. The money, you know, we went green, which was really good. That's awesome. Now it's been obviously a couple of years since that now. And, and I mean, you're still going strong. Is this now the main thing you're focusing on? Uh, which we're growing. Yeah. Uh, or just put you on its own, whether it's building it or, or growing it. Yeah. yeah. Um, we're actually just about to complete. Uh, so blue tier is a very ambitious project that we had to sort of split into different phases. And we're just about to complete the very first phase. That's three years later. The very okay. first, first phase is about to be complete. Yeah, so so I guess we should have done this before a little earlier, but since we're talking about you know the, the product itself right now and, and now we have got phases, right? I, I I like I said, I've heard about the product, I've seen it before, I've looked at some of the I mean, so many different features that are on there. Um and it's just amazing how many you've been able to put in there, but it's really, it's, it's everything that a freelancer would need, right? You have invoicing, you have team management for when they start bringing on more team members, you got time tracking and stuff like that. When do you stop building more products within, right? More features. Yeah. Well, see the idea behind Plutio is not only to give you a set of tools that you need to manage a business. Um, and it's not only about managing a business, it's about finding new clients, running the business, and growing the business. There's different aspects to, you know, to, 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 to growing a business. And so um, we had split in different phases. And this very, fir very first phase is about the tool itself. It's about providing you with the toolkit. And that is project management, task management, time tracking, invoicing proposals, contracts, marketing, and so on. And we're, we're just about to complete that phase by launching forms and automation. By then, we will have a set of tools that you actually need to start your business and to run your business. And now phase two is, is introducing artificial intelligence and a built-in ecosystem to help you not only fuel, fuel your business by communicate, uh, connecting with other freelancers around the world using Plutio as well, but also to help you sort of set your business on autopilot and teach you the other aspects of running a business without having to, without being overwhelmed. So for instance, if you want to, let's say you're just starting a new design business and to learn how to do the finance part of it, how to do the project management part of it, how to do the sales part of it is extremely overwhelming. So what we do instead is as you using Plutio, as you're doing things and doing actions, Plutio will start sort of recognizing how you do them and how other people do them and find the best way to do it and teach you. Okay, how about adding a 1% late fee to your invoices since your invoices are late? See if that works for you. And so on. So you will you will learn how to do all the different sort of aspects of running a business bit by bit. So hopefully, on the long on the long run, you will also it will also be an educational uh, sort right. of tool. Very cool. So it, it sounds like I mean you 
in, in the grand scheme of things, Rudio is really just getting started. Right? Like you just finished baseball and there's a lot more to come, which is awesome because you've got, I mean, uh, I think Forbes named you number one or top, I don't know if it was number one, but one of the top apps for freelancers, which is pretty cool already um, and that sort of thing. But what's like so far, right? It, obviously it's been an entire journey. You, you've done a lot. You've the, the amount of work I think that you've put into like just fund it, not even just build it. Right. But, but fund the product has been a lot. What's been the hardest thing about it though? Uh, the hardest thing for me was uh, knowing when to stop making it perfect when it doesn't, it doesn't need to be at that stage. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a pixel perfect freak and I had, I redesigned certain elements a million times to make sure they actually, you know, <laughs> they, they work perfectly everywhere and, they look really good. So if I didn't do that, I still would have had a good product, um, but it would have taken me less time to develop. But um, yeah, that was one of the hardest things is because I'm a designer and I had to do all the, different, all the different sort of part of the business. And it was very hard to know when to stop. What's your favorite thing about the entire journey? Being able to serve people, mm -hmm. to be honest, to, to, to have built something that people find beneficial, people use on a daily basis and rely on. Mm -hmm. That makes me feel amazing. That's, that's yeah. just a great feeling I can't explain. Yeah. How how many users do you have now? If you, if you don't mind asking, I think yeah, it's gonna bad. guess just from the numbers that we've talked. I'm, I'm I feel like I'm gonna be completely off, but I'm thinking seven thousand maybe. It's about twenty thousand. Wow. Okay, I was way way under. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. And like, what are the steps? Or like. Okay, so now you're getting a lot of people in, right? And, and with, with any really good product, people bring more people with them. But what's been one of the best, you know, marketing strategies, tactics, whatever you want to call it, to bring more people into, in, into using Plutia? Well, the, the fact is we haven't done any paid marketing as of yet. It's actually mm -hmm. something we're looking into as we speak right now. It's something I'm, I'm looking into right now but what we did before and worked really well for for us in terms of growing the business is the community we focus on building building a community around the product so we build a facebook group and we try to invite everybody who signs up to Plutio into the group and that's where they you know basically get sold by the help of the community members by other fellow customers so the community truly was one of the sort of uh, growth engines that worked yeah. really well for us and still is but obviously there is so much that you can squeeze out of it so you can't use it forever and unless you can grow it grow it and grow it but you know it's if you bring somebody into Plutio, they know a few other people so they will bring them on and so it's just the word of mouth that really helped us yeah i, I definitely agree with the community sense of everything i i think it's just part of being a human and and, and human behavior and like psychologists things like that but essentially i've seen it happen you know firsthand too where I think you can really leverage the community for multiple things. Um, one of them being like customer service uh, also aside from like acquisition and things like that. But like you said, once they're in there, they're going to hear, you know, if people are generally speaking well of the product, they're going to hear how good it is, the things that they've been able to, you know, accomplish because of the help of Plutio in this case. Uh, and ideally just, you don't even have to do any selling because once they're in there, they're, if they actually need the product, they're very likely to convert. Correct. Just bear in mind, it can be a curse just as it can be. <laughs> exactly. So you make, you make one mistake and then, you know, you don't, you don't even know where to hide. Yeah. Yeah. What would you say has been your biggest accomplishment so far with Plutio? Um, able to start something from nothing and into a product people love all around the world and use on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. um, you know, building a profitable business, um, I think it's an accomplishment. What is, I mean, you, yeah, like you're still very young, right? And my, my thought here is a lot of, of people, you know, your age, my age, I feel like sometimes you're, you're always looking for that next thing that you want to, to be doing or, or you just see other people doing, you know, certain things that might excite you as well. Do you think you ever want to maybe build another product um, or, or just go a different route once? I mean, I, I feel like you could potentially just stop here with Plutio, you know what I mean? And like 
it's it, like, it'll keep going. You're at 20,000 users. People are still coming in, but do you ever think, okay, like maybe I should be doing something else. What's the fun of standing still? Nothing. So it's always, there is always new, new ideas. Um, in my, like I have heaps of ideas that I want to sort of um, work on, but it's prioritizing them. It's first getting Pluto to a level where it can support me and support my other ideas as well. So once that is done, I can then expand into, you know, new ventures and new ideas. Love but it. once that sort of, you know, foundations is established. Yeah, I 100% agree. Now, with, with speaking of, you know, Pluto being able to sustain itself, yourself, and, and obviously the customers most importantly, but also team members, do you have, like, how, how big is your team now? And uh, what, what are their, their, their key roles? Like, the, I guess, the core team. Yeah, we're, we're four in total, completely remote. Lead developer, senior developer, and uh, customer service, and me. Very cool, very cool. And uh, what is your favorite part about it? Well, like, what is your favorite part about leading a team? Um, just being able to uh, create something together. And it's, it's the fact that everyone works at Plutio is actually passionate about, you know, what they're working on. And it, you can see that in, in the results that, you know, and in the way they work. And I think that's my favorite thing, having someone else or a group of people who share that passion and share that sort of mission and vision with you. And I think that's one of the favorite things yeah. of working with the team. And how, how long have you guys been working together? So with the lead developer, three years, the senior developer about a year and a half, the customer service just under a year. And have you guys ever met in person? Uh, only, <laughs> only the lead developer. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I, I think, you know, for, for, for software companies, it's always like, you either, I feel like you're either working remote completely or you're, you're just not remote. Um, yeah. but I think it's crazy to think about like how you can literally build so many things and, and it's really great things, right. That produce a, a huge amount of value to people without even meeting one another. I agree. Yeah. Do you ever want or, or think about what it would be like if you weren't remote? Absolutely. Yeah. I think about it quite often. And um, it, is a, it is a nice concept because after all, we do like, you know, the, the connection. Um, and it's completely different than having, having it, you know, through, through, a, through a digital sort of uh, channel. Yeah. And I, I like to touch a little bit more on like the, the, the personal side of being a business owner and a founder, right? And, and I think it's, it's important because I, I, I don't like when people think of, you know, oh, it's, it's all work because it's, it's not. Um, I obviously don't know your, you know, family or anything, you know, any sort of dynamic in that, in that sense. But what is your, your, your way to kind of, you know, work-life balance kind of thing? To be fair, it's a, it's a bit of a struggle um, to sort of get into that uh, balance. Mm -hmm. And I've, mm -hmm. I've tried many times to try and balance it out, but it just always get sort of bend towards getting things done, working. Okay. Um, and it, yeah, it, I haven't, haven't actually managed to get the balance right just yet. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's, it's definitely tough, especially when you're so in, you know, into your work, into your, into you like to do, into what you're passionate about. But I also think that my, my personal view is that there's, there's no such thing as personal, you know, like, or work-life balance. I think it's, it's mostly like an integral you know, like everything needs to be just working together as is and, and not try to force, right? Like, I don't want to, like, if I don't want to be working for whatever reason, then I guess don't work, but I guess try to use that energy into something else that's productive and in whatever sense of the word that is. Yeah. I guess you just do what you enjoy doing and what you think is exactly. worth your time. Very cool. If you could go back... I think it was 15 years. Would you have done anything differently? Anything differently? Um, it's been a long time. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I would have paid a bit more attention or did a bit more due diligence before getting anyone involved in the business or, mm. you know, just hiring mm. anybody. It just, that level of excitement sort of blurs your um, thinking. And just, you know, I want to do this and I want to do this. And yeah, you're fantastic. You're great. Just go on and work for it. Because, you know, it's... To just not move too fast sometimes. 
yeah, it, it, that level of excitement, especially at the very beginning, it sort of pushes you to move really fast and make rational decisions that you should probably slow down a little bit, even when you're excited. But it's yeah. very hard to control yeah. sometimes. It is. I, I agree with that. Is there anything else that you, like, any, any sort of lesson personally that you've learned that you'd like to share with the audience here? Um, well, lesson number one is when, just before I started developing Plutio or finding somebody who helps me as a developer to do the back end, um, I went on and I tried to connect with a couple of, couple of investors to see if I can actually get investment and just get a team and do it, you know, the, the ordinary way, if, if, if that's the same. And, um, um, a lot of them just said, well, to be honest, a lot of them said, you know, it's not yet the stage, you know, you're only an idea, we need to see tracks, we need to see a product, et cetera, et cetera. And they, they bring you down in a sense. And um, if you have an idea, just try and learn and build it yourself or build at least a level of it so you can show it, if you can, you know, can physically show it to people. Right. And instead of just running around, wasting time, trying to find investors, I mean, don't get me wrong, it works for some people. You know, you could get and raise money and there are some ideas that actually need funding to, 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 to get it off the ground. But mm -hmm. the majority of ideas that you can build online, and to be honest, you don't necessarily need to learn code to build some of these ideas because yeah. now there is heaps of libraries and tools that allows you to put something together without having to write a single line of code. Mm -hmm. So try and find all the different ways that you can use or do or you know, to, to build something before you go on to raising money or getting support from, you know, from other people, if that makes sense. Yeah, I completely agree. I think people get to cut up on, on needing to have some sort of capital to build anything where in reality, I mean, I, I think now, right, especially with software, you don't, you don't really need capital. I think you need more time than anything just to, to sit down and actually do the work, whether that is, I mean, if you don't have the capital, you technically can't hire out. Um, you could always give equity in the company, right? But also, and have them do some of that work. But I think if you just sit down and like you said, there's tons of libraries, there's a lot of no code apps now that you can build stuff with. So I don't, I don't think it's necessary to, to be a, a programmer or anything like that by any means either. Absolutely. Now, yeah. In the software space, I feel like we, we tend to, to sometimes put companies in a pedestal, right? And, and look up to them and, and make them be these huge things. But with that being said, are there any software companies that you personally like to look up to and, and not necessarily to copy or anything like that, but just you think, okay, like they've done an amazing job, right? And, and what can I learn from that? Um, it's a good question. Not actually. Uh, I mean, um, the one that I can think of from the back of my head is uh, Hotjar. So the Hotjar company is a completely, almost completely remote team. Mm -hmm. And it just seems everybody's energetic and happy at what they do. And there's always, you know, there's always these uh, snapshots of the team on a, you know, on a, a trip somewhere or, you know what yep. I mean? So although they're remote, they're always connected somehow. Yeah. And I would not be able to do that, to build a, a sort of a large team sort of scattered all around the world to where, you know, wherever they want to work from, but they're all also connected it, you know, to, right. to, to a certain level. So, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Well, thank you so much, Leo, for, for being on here today. It's really a pleasure speaking with you and, and learning so many things that I didn't know about Plutio and how you built it. It's super impressive. Um, and uh, let's stay in touch. And I'd love to, to hear more about how, you know, Plutio Gross. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Welcome. And one last thing, Leo, where can people find you online? Um, on Twitter, Leo Bassam or Facebook. Um, and just go on Plutio.com, go on the about page and you'll find the links there. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks so much, Leo. And we'll stay in touch. Take care. Absolutely. Bye for now.